While humans may not be as familiar with sharks as they are with land animals, their fear of them is comparable if not greater. This video will delve into the reasons behind this fear in detail. Anderson stood on the deck of his ship, the salty sea breeze tousling his hair as he gazed out over the endless expanse of the ocean. For as long as he could remember, the sea had held a special place in his heart, a place of mystery and wonder, where adventure awaited at every turn. From a young age, Anderson had been drawn to the water like a moth to a flame. He spent countless hours exploring the coastline near his home in California, diving beneath the waves. As he grew older, Anderson's passion for diving only deepened, and he soon became a fully-fledged diver, honing his skills and mastering the art of navigating the underwater world. He trained others in the ways of the sea, passing on his knowledge and expertise to a new generation of adventurers eager to follow in his footsteps. But it wasn't until he heard of a fast and seemingly easy way to get rich while doing what he loved that Anderson's life took a dramatic turn. Treasure hunting was a dream come true for a man like him, with a thirst for adventure and a love of the sea that ran deeper than the ocean itself. Joining a crew of like-minded individuals, Anderson set sail for the open waters, their sights set on the promise of untold riches hidden beneath the waves. Together, they navigated treacherous waters, scouring the ocean floor for emeralds, diamonds, gold, and other treasures lost to the depths of time. With each dive, Anderson's excitement grew, fueled by the thrill of the hunt and the promise of discovery that lay just beyond his fingertips. He pored over maps and charts, studying the ocean currents and scouring historical records in search of clues that might lead them to their next big score. And when he heard of the legendary riches of the Nuestra Señora de Atocha, a Spanish galleon that sank off the coast of Florida in 1622, laden with gold, silver, and gemstones. Anderson knew that he had found his true calling. He moved his operation to the area, determined to try his luck in the hunt for the greatest treasure of them all. Assembling a crew of seasoned veterans and eager rookies, Anderson set to work organizing his expedition, his mind abuzz with plans and possibilities. Armed with metal detectors and other specialized equipment, Anderson's divers plunged into the water, their eyes scanning the ocean floor for any sign of treasure buried beneath the sand. It was during one such moment of quiet contemplation that one of the divers, known as Alex, first spotted it. A shape looming in the darkness, its outline barely discernible against the black void of the trench. At first he thought it was a trick of the light, a figment of his imagination born from the oppressive weight of the ocean pressing down on them. For a moment, time seemed to stand still as Alex and the shark locked eyes, each sizing up the other in a silent battle of wills. Then, without warning, the shark lunged forward, its jaws snapping shut with a sickening crunch as it clamped down on Alex's arm. Alex tried to wrench himself free from the shark's grip, but it wasn't that easy. While he tried that, blood clouded the water around him. And that's when his training kicked in, and he remembered the protocol for a shark encounter. With a surge of adrenaline, he reached for his dive knife, his fingers fumbling in the darkness as he struggled to locate it amidst the chaos. The shark thrashed violently, its grip tightening with each passing moment, and Alex knew that he had to act fast if he had any hope of escaping with his life. Summoning all of his strength, Alex drove the blade of his knife into the shark's side, the metallic clang of metal against bone reverberating through the water. The shark recoiled in pain, releasing its hold on Alex's arm as it retreated into the darkness, leaving behind a trail of blood in its wake. With a gasp of relief, Alex quickly checked his arm for injuries, his heart pounding in his chest as he assessed the damage. Miraculously, the wetsuit had protected him from the worst of the shark's attack, but he could feel the sting of shallow cuts and bruises where the teeth had grazed his skin. Meanwhile, aboard the research vessel, Alex's colleagues had returned from their dive with little gems and were waiting for him, thinking he was coming with something special when they noticed the disturbance in the water. At first they thought it was just a school of fish, but as the commotion grew louder they realized that something was wrong. Rushing to the edge of the ship, they scanned the water for any sign of their teammate, their hearts pounding in their chests as they frantically searched for any trace of him. And then, just as they were about to give up hope, they saw him, a lone figure bobbing in the water, his head barely visible above the surface. Without hesitation, they sprang into action, 
throwing out a lifeline and hauling Alex on board with practiced efficiency. His wetsuit was torn and bloodied, his face pale and drawn with pain as he gasped for breath. But he was alive, and that was all that mattered. The team wasted no time in administering first aid, their hands moving swiftly as they worked to stem the flow of blood and stabilize Alex's condition. Time was of the essence, and they knew that they needed to act quickly if they were to save their teammate's life. Word of the incident spread quickly, making headlines in newspapers and news broadcasts around the world. For a brief moment, Anderson and his crew were thrust into the spotlight, their brush with death capturing the imagination of the public and sparking a fierce debate about the ethics of treasure hunting in the deep sea. One of the first to weigh in on the controversy was Dr. Robert Stevens, a curator of maritime history at an American institution. In a scathing op-ed published in a major newspaper, he accused treasure hunters like Alex and his team of destroying shipwrecks in their quest for gold and precious artifacts, likening their actions to grave robbing and pillaging. According to him, the treasures of the deep belong to all of humanity, not just to those who seek to profit from their discovery. By plundering these wrecks for their own gain, treasure hunters are not only robbing future generations of the chance to learn from maritime heritage, but also destroying historically significant artifacts in the process. His words struck a chord with the public, sparking a wave of outrage and condemnation against treasure hunters and their practices. Calls for government intervention grew louder, with many demanding that laws be enacted to protect the world's underwater heritage from further exploitation. Caught in the crossfire of the controversy, Anderson and his team found themselves facing a backlash unlike anything they had ever experienced before. But amidst the chaos and confusion, one thing remained clear, their commitment to each other and to their mission to uncover the secrets of the deep. Laura Perry was no stranger to the call of the ocean. From a young age, she was captivated by its mysteries, spending hours combing the shores near her childhood home for shells and sea creatures. It was this early fascination that would ultimately shape her future, leading her down a path of discovery and adventure as a marine biologist. Throughout her career, Laura has faced countless challenges from navigating the complexities of academia to braving the harsh conditions of fieldwork in remote locations. But through it all, she remained steadfast in her pursuit of knowledge, driven by a deep-seated passion for the world beneath the waves. Despite her dedication to her work, Laura's personal life has always taken a back seat, with the demands of her career leaving little time for romance or relationships. But she had never regretted her choices, finding fulfillment in the solitude of her research and the freedom of the open ocean. One of her daring expeditions took her to Bermuda, as she prepared for her solo expedition near the Bermuda Triangle, she knew that she would be facing one of her greatest challenges yet. The deep sea currents in the area were notoriously treacherous, and the potential dangers posed by the mysterious phenomenon of the Bermuda Triangle only added to the risk. But Laura was undeterred, armed with years of experience and a fierce determination to uncover the secrets of the ocean. She set out aboard her research vessel, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. With the help of state-of-the-art equipment and her expert knowledge, Laura began her survey of the deep-sea currents near the Bermuda Triangle, collecting samples and data that would shed light on the mysteries of the region. But as she descended into the depths, Laura soon realized that she was not alone. Strange phenomena danced before her eyes, shimmering lights and swirling eddies that seemed to defy explanation. Yet despite the eerie atmosphere, Laura pressed on, determined to unravel the secrets of the Bermuda Triangle once and for all. As she conducted her research, Laura encountered a variety of marine life, from colorful coral reefs to elusive deep-sea creatures. Each discovery filled her with a sense of wonder and awe, reminding her of why she had dedicated her life to the study of the ocean. Laura was busy studying underwater when she sighted a shrub and drove on to check for whatever that could be and that's where she met oceanic white-tip sharks in their hidden habitats. Laura didn't hesitate to take a picture and even a video of this fascinating creature. Still, unknowingly, she had disturbed the sharks with her presence and suddenly turned aggressive, their sleek bodies slicing through the water with deadly intent. Laura remained calm, her years of training kicking in as she assessed the situation. She knew that oceanic white-tip sharks were known for their aggressive behavior, 
especially when they felt threatened or cornered. With the predators closing in, Laura quickly radioed her findings to the surface, alerting her colleagues to the danger she faced below. In a matter of seconds, one of the sharks launched itself at her submersible, its razor-sharp teeth tearing through the metal hull with frightening ease. The force of the impact sent shockwaves rippling through the tiny vessel, causing catastrophic damage to the vessel and leaving Laura stranded in the darkness below. The suddenness of the attack left Laura reeling, her mind struggling to process the sheer ferocity of the creatures that surrounded her. She had known the risks of exploring the deep sea, but nothing could have prepared her for this. At first, panic threatened to consume her. Laura had trusted her submersible to protect her from the dangers of the ocean depths, but now it lay crippled and defenseless, a testament to the awesome power of nature. With her oxygen supply dwindling and the predators still lurking nearby, Laura faced a desperate struggle for survival. Every moment was a battle against the relentless march of time as she fought to stay calm and focused in the face of overwhelming odds. Summoning all of her training and expertise, Laura began to assess the extent of the damage to her submersible. She knew that she needed to formulate a plan for escape, and fast. Laura couldn't shake the feeling of dread that gnawed at her insides. The sharks were still out there, their sleek bodies circling in the darkness, waiting for the opportunity to strike again. Laura knew that she couldn't stay hidden in the safety of her submarine forever. She needed to make a break for it, to swim for the surface, and to hope that help was on the way. Summoning all of her courage, Laura made her move. With the last of her strength, she opened the latch and slipped out into the water, her heart pounding in her chest as she swam frantically toward the surface. The sharks followed close behind, their predatory instincts driving them forward with relentless determination. But Laura refused to be their prey. With each stroke of her arms, she pushed herself closer and closer to freedom, the adrenaline coursing through her veins, giving her the strength to keep going even as exhaustion threatened to overwhelm her. And then, just when all seemed lost, a glimmer of light appeared on the horizon, the unmistakable silhouette of the rescue vessel sent to pluck her from the jaws of death and return her safely to the world above. As Laura stepped back onto dry land, she knew that she had emerged from her ordeal forever changed, the ocean had tested her in ways she could never have imagined, pushing her to the very limits of her endurance and beyond. But through it all, she had remained resolute, refusing to let fear or despair dictate her fate. The bond between James Moore, Adkins Smith, Oliver Brown, and Fred Allen was forged in the crucible of college camaraderie. From the moment they met, they knew they were kindred spirits bound together by a shared sense of adventure and a love for life's simple pleasures. After graduation, fate smiled upon them once again, as they all found employment at the same prestigious manufacturing company in America. Though their jobs kept them busy and often scattered them across different departments, they remained steadfast friends, united by their unwavering loyalty to one another. Despite their demanding work schedules, the weekends became sacred to the quartet, a time reserved for laughter, relaxation, and the occasional adventure. With the help of modern technology, they stayed connected through a group chat on their preferred social media app, where they exchanged jokes, shared memes, and meticulously planned their weekend escapades. One fateful weekend, the group decided to indulge their shared love for the water by chartering a yacht for a leisurely cruise in the Caribbean. It was a decision made in haste, but fueled by excitement and anticipation as they envisioned a weekend filled with sunshine, sea breezes, and endless laughter. As they boarded the yacht, their spirits soared, buoyed by the promise of adventure on the horizon. The captain greeted them with a warm smile, his weathered face betraying a lifetime of seafaring experience as he guided them aboard the sleek vessel. With the gentle hum of the engine beneath them, the group set sail into the vast expanse of the Caribbean Sea, leaving behind the worries and stresses of their daily lives on shore. As the day wore on, the friends reveled in the simple joys of camaraderie, sharing stories, and toasting to their enduring friendship with glasses of chilled champagne. The worries of the world melted away, replaced by a sense of freedom and exhilaration that only the open sea could provide. The journey had been smooth sailing for the seasoned sailor and his companions as they traversed the open sea, the rhythmic sway of the yacht lulling them into a sense of contentment. 
As they neared a remote island, the sun beat down upon the deck, casting dappled shadows through the umbrella covers as the group basked in the warmth of the tropical breeze. James, Fred, and the others laughed and joked as they passed around bottles of chilled beer, the clinking of glass punctuating the easy camaraderie that bound them together. The yacht glided gracefully into the sheltered bay of the remote island, where other tourists had gathered to soak up the sun and explore the pristine beaches. Eager to join in the festivities, James and Fred led the group ashore, their spirits buoyed by the promise of adventure and relaxation. They wandered through the bustling beach market, sampling exotic fruits and haggling with local vendors for trinkets and souvenirs to take home. But amidst the hustle and bustle, one crucial item had been overlooked, a supply of beef for their impromptu barbecue. Realizing their oversight, James and Fred quickly regrouped, scouring the market for a vendor who could provide them with the missing ingredient. After a brief search, they managed to procure a selection of succulent cuts, their mouths watering in anticipation of the feast to come. With provisions in hand, they made their way back to the yacht, where Oliver awaited them with a mischievous grin. Fully clad in his snorkeling gear, he seemed eager to dive into the azure waters that beckoned just beyond the yacht's stern. Ignoring his friend's antics, James and Fred set to work preparing the barbecue. The savory scent of grilling meat is enough, but minutes into tending to the flames, their attention was drawn to the water, where Oliver had vanished beneath the surface once more. Fred was concerned about his absence, while James assured him that Oliver was a good swimmer and was probably exploring. But even as he spoke, a sense of unease gnawed at the edges of James's mind, a nagging suspicion that something was amiss. It was unlikely Oliver would disappear, especially when there was food to be shared and stories to be told. Meanwhile, Oliver marveled at the kaleidoscope of colors that danced beneath the crystal-clear waters, the vibrant coral reefs teeming with life as schools of fish darted to and fro in a mesmerizing display of aquatic ballet. But amid the beauty of the underwater world, danger lurked in the shadows, unseen and unfathomable. And it was in one such shadowy recess that Oliver's peaceful reverie was shattered by the sudden appearance of a bull shark its sleek form gliding silently through the depths with lethal precision. Startled by the unexpected presence of the predator, Oliver's heart thundered in his chest as he thrashed about in a desperate attempt to fend off the shark, or at least turn back and swim to the yacht. But his frantic movements only served to attract the creature's attention, its cold, unblinking eyes fixed on him with a predatory intensity that sent a shiver down his spine. With a swift and brutal lunge, the shark closed the distance between them in the blink of an eye, its razor-sharp teeth glinting menacingly in the sunlight as it sank its jaws into Oliver's flesh. Pain exploded through his body as he felt the searing heat of the shark's bite, the world around him fading into a haze of agony and fear. In the chaos that ensued, Oliver fought desperately for his life, his limbs thrashing against the water as he struggled to break free from the shark's vice-like grip. But the creature's strength was relentless, its powerful jaws clamping down with crushing force as it dragged him deeper into the abyss. With each passing moment, Oliver felt his strength waning and his vision growing dim as the oxygen in his lungs dwindled to dangerously low levels. But even in the face of impending doom, he refused to surrender to despair, drawing upon reserves of courage and determination he never knew he possessed. And then, just when he felt the cold embrace of death closing in around him, the shark released its hold, vanishing into the murky depths as suddenly as it had appeared. Gasping for air, Oliver struggled to the surface and his body was racked with pain as he clung to consciousness by the slimmest of threads. His presence coincided with James becoming more worried about him, and he sighted Olivier in the water circled with crimson water. As he was pulled back aboard the yacht, Oliver's friends sprang into action, their hands moving with practiced efficiency as they assessed the extent of his injuries. Blood stained the water around him, a grim reminder of the ferocity of the shark's attack as they worked tirelessly to stem the flow and stabilize his condition. However, with the nearest medical facility hours away, time was of the essence as they raced against the clock to administer first aid and get him to safety. Every passing moment felt like an eternity as they navigated the treacherous waters, their hearts heavy with the weight of uncertainty and fear. Minutes later, the lights of the hospital were shown on his face. Oliver had lost a considerable amount of blood, but thanks to the quick thinking and unwavering determination of his friends, 
He had survived against all odds. In the days and weeks that followed, Oliver's road to recovery was long and arduous, marked by countless surgeries and painful rehabilitation sessions. But with each passing day, he grew stronger, his body slowly but surely healing from the wounds inflicted by the shark's vicious attack. And then, after months of intensive care and countless setbacks, Oliver was finally discharged from the hospital, his spirit unbroken and his resolve stronger than ever. Though the scars of his ordeal would forever mark his body, they served as a poignant reminder of the indomitable power of the human spirit in the face of adversity. The sun hung low on the horizon as the research vessel, AquaQuest, sliced through the calm waters of the Pacific Ocean. On board, a team of scientists from various disciplines eagerly prepared for their expedition to study marine biodiversity in the remote island chain known as the Coral Haven Archipelago. Leading the expedition was Dr. Benjamin Hayes, a renowned marine biologist with years of experience studying the delicate ecosystems of the world's oceans. Dr. Sophia Chen, an expert in marine genetics, and Dr. Elena Rodriguez, a seasoned oceanographer, joined him. Together, they formed the core of the research team, with their combined expertise and passion for discovery driving their mission forward. As the AquaQuest neared the first island in the archipelago, excitement buzzed through the air palpable in the eager chatter of the scientists gathered on deck. Each member of the team had their own area of expertise, from studying coral reef ecology to cataloging marine species diversity, and they were eager to put their skills to the test in this remote and largely unexplored corner of the ocean. Throughout the expedition, the team planned to conduct a series of surveys and experiments aimed at gaining a deeper understanding of the complex interactions between marine life and their environment, but the journey was not without its challenges. As they navigated the treacherous waters of the archipelago, the team encountered unpredictable weather patterns, equipment malfunctions, and the occasional run-in with territorial wildlife. Yet, despite these obstacles, their determination remained unwavering. Maybe it's because they haven't met the challenge that would shake them. It wasn't for long when they dived into the ocean in one of the archipelagos. Armed with underwater cameras and scientific instruments, they were on a mission to conduct surveys of the marine life inhabiting the coral reefs. As they swam deeper into the heart of the reef, the team marveled at the kaleidoscope of colors that surrounded them. The vibrant corals teeming with life as fish darted to and fro in a dazzling display of aquatic ballet. But their wonder was short-lived, as a sudden shift in the water's current caught their attention, sending a ripple of unease through the group. Before they could react, a shadowy figure materialized out of the depths. A tiger shark, its sleek form slicing through the water with lethal precision. And it was not alone. Behind it, a pack of aggressive predators followed in its wake, drawn to the area by an abundance of prey. Instinct kicked in as the scientists scrambled to regroup, their hearts pounding in their chests as they realized the danger they were facing. Tiger sharks were known for their aggressive behavior and formidable hunting prowess, and the sight of a pack of them descending upon them sent a shiver of fear down their spines. With adrenaline coursing through their veins, the team made a split-second decision to stick together, hoping that safety lay in numbers. They huddled close, their eyes scanning the water for any sign of movement as they prepared to defend themselves against the onslaught. But the sharks were relentless, their powerful jaws snapping shut with terrifying speed as they closed in on their prey. Dr. Hayes shouted orders above the chaos, his voice steady despite the mounting danger. He directed the team to swim towards the vessel as that was the only place they could seek refuge. Before they swam for the vessel, Dr. Hayes assessed the situation with a cool head, his mind racing with thoughts of how to outsmart their relentless pursuers. Drawing upon his years of experience studying marine predators, he formulated a plan to distract the sharks long enough for the team to make a break for freedom. Using what little equipment they had on them, the scientists distracted the shark with it. Seizing the opportunity, the team made a break for it, swimming with all their might toward the safety of the vessel. Adrenaline fueled their efforts as they kicked and stroked through the water, their muscles burning with exertion as they fought to outpace their relentless pursuers. But just as some of them reached the vessel, disaster struck. One of the junior scientists, named Richmond, overcome by exhaustion and panic, faltered in their stroke, falling behind the rest of the group. 
In a cruel twist of fate, he became an easy target for the Sharks, who wasted no time in closing in for the kill. With horror, the team watched as the Sharks descended upon their vulnerable comrade, their jaws snapping shut with ruthless efficiency. Despite their best efforts to intervene, they were powerless to stop the brutal attack, their screams of anguish drowned out by the churning waters. With each stroke of their arms and kick off their flippers, the rest propelled themselves through the water, their hearts pounding with fear and adrenaline. But the sharks were close behind again, their sleek forms slicing through the water with terrifying speed as they closed in on another prey. Frantic shouts and cries filled the air as the scientists fought desperately to fend off the predator's attacks, their hands clawing at the water in a desperate bid for survival. But the sharks were relentless, their jaws snapping shut with bone-crushing force as they sought to claim their next meal. With a final burst of energy, the last scientist broke through the water's surface and was pulled up, gasping for air. Immediately after this, the vessel sailed out of the deadly zone. The salty tang of the sea filled the air as Captain Jack Mallory cast off from the dock, his weathered hands expertly guiding his small boat out into the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean. It was a routine he had performed countless times before, yet each trip held the promise of adventure and discovery that kept him coming back for more. As the sun rose high in the sky, casting its golden rays across the shimmering waters, Captain Jack set his sights on a prime fishing spot off the coast of New England. With decades of experience under his belt, he knew the ins and outs of these waters like the back of his hand, and he had a feeling that today would be a day to remember. And it truly was one. With a practiced hand, Captain Jack baited his line and cast it into the depths below. The fishing rod held firmly in his weathered grip as he waited patiently for a bite. The gentle rocking of the boat and the rhythmic sound of the waves provided a soothing backdrop to his thoughts as he settled in for what promised to be a peaceful day on the water. But as the hours passed and the sun climbed higher in the sky, Captain Jack's patience began to wane. The fish seemed elusive, and despite his best efforts, his line remained stubbornly still, the bait untouched by any passing creatures. Frustration gnawed at the edges of Captain Jack's mind as he considered his options. He could move to another spot, try a different bait, or simply wait it out in the hopes that the fish would eventually come to him. But just as he was about to make a decision, he felt a tug on his line, a strong, powerful pull that threatened to yank the fishing rod from his grasp. With a surge of adrenaline, Captain Jack sprang into action, his muscles tensing as he fought to reel in whatever creature had taken the bait. But as the line drew closer to the surface, he caught a glimpse of something that sent a shiver down his spine, a sleek, dark shape lurking just beneath the waves. For a moment, Captain Jack's heart leaped with excitement as he imagined the size and strength of the creature he had hooked. But his excitement quickly turned to dread as he realized the truth. The shape he had seen was not that of a fish, but of something much more formidable. With a sinking feeling in the pit of his stomach, Captain Jack realized that he had inadvertently hooked a great white shark, one of the most fearsome predators of the deep. Panic surged through his veins as he struggled to control the fishing rod, his mind racing with thoughts of how to extricate himself from this dangerous situation. With each passing moment, the shark's struggles grew more frenzied its powerful tail thrashing against the water with terrifying force as it fought to break free from the line that bound it. Captain Jack knew that he was no match for the creature's strength, and he feared that if he didn't act quickly the situation could escalate into something far more dangerous. Summoning all of his courage and strength, Captain Jack made a split-second decision to cut the line, releasing the shark from its unwitting captor. With a swift motion he reached for his knife and sliced through the fishing line, watching with bated breath as the shark disappeared beneath the waves once more. But the danger was far from over. With lightning-fast reflexes, Captain Jack attempted to evade the shark's move, but it was too late. In a blur of motion, the shark came back and lashed out with its razor-sharp teeth, sinking deep into Captain Jack's leg with bone-crushing force. Pain exploded through Captain Jack's body as he felt the searing heat of the shark's bite, his cries of agony drowned out by the roar of the ocean and the thrashing of the shark's powerful tail. In a desperate bid to escape, he kicked and thrashed with all his might, his hands grappling for anything that could be used as a weapon. He had dropped his knife inside the boat and couldn't reach it again after the sudden attack. But the shark was relentless, 
its grip on Captain Jack's leg unyielding as it dragged him further into the depths. With each passing moment, he felt his strength waning and his vision growing dim as the oxygen in his lungs dwindled to dangerously low levels. With a final burst of adrenaline, Captain Jack summoned every last ounce of strength he had left and delivered a powerful blow to the shark's nose, stunning it just long enough to break free from its grasp. Gasping for air, he kicked and struggled towards the surface, his injured leg trailing behind him like a dead weight. As he breached the surface, Jack's vision swam with pain and exhaustion, but he knew that his ordeal was far from over. With blood gushing from his wound and the shark still lurking dangerously close by, he knew that he needed to get back to shore, and fast. Summoning every ounce of willpower he possessed, Jack forced himself to focus on the task at hand, which was swimming ashore. But the journey back to shore was fraught with peril as the shark continued to chase him menacingly. With each passing moment, Captain Jack feared that the shark would launch another attack, sealing his fate once and for all. But despite the odds stacked against him, Jack refused to give up hope. With grim determination, he pressed on, his eyes fixed on the distant shoreline as he fought to stay conscious against the relentless onslaught of pain and exhaustion. Minutes felt like an eternity as Jack battled against the elements, but he finally reached solid ground, where he collapsed due to pain and exhaustion. With the help of passers-by, Jack was rushed to the nearest hospital where doctors worked tirelessly to save his life. Despite the severity of his injuries, Captain Jack's fighting spirit never wavered. After weeks of grueling surgeries and rehabilitation, he emerged victorious, his leg intact and his spirit stronger than ever before. The sun beat down relentlessly upon the crystal-clear waters of the Red Sea as a huge research vessel cut through the waves with purposeful determination. On board, a team of marine biologists eagerly prepared for their expedition to study the ecosystems that thrive beneath the surface of the ocean. Leading the expedition was Dr. Emma Thompson, a renowned marine biologist with a passion for exploring the mysteries of the deep. Joining her were Dr. Sofia Ramirez, an expert in ecology, and Dr. Lisa Chen, a seasoned shark biologist among other scientists. As the vessel neared its first dive site, excitement buzzed through the air, palpable in the eager chatter of the scientists gathered on deck. Each member of the team had their area of expertise, from studying coral bleaching to cataloging shark populations, and they were eager to put their skills to the test in the vibrant underwater world of the Red Sea. With their scuba gear securely in place, some of the team descended beneath the waves, their eyes widening in wonder as they were greeted by a kaleidoscope of colors that stretched out before them. The coral reefs of the Red Sea were a sight to behold teeming with life and bustling with activity as fish of all shapes and sizes darted to and fro in a dazzling display of aquatic ballet. But amidst the vibrant coral formations, the team's attention was drawn to a shadowy figure lurking just beyond the reef. A reef shark, its sleek form blending seamlessly with its surroundings as it patrolled the waters in search of prey. With bated breath, the team followed the shark as it weaved its way through the coral formations their cameras clicking away as they documented its behavior and movements. But the reef shark was not alone in its domain. As the team continued their survey of the coral reef, they encountered a variety of other shark species, each with its unique characteristics and behaviors. From the sleek, streamlined silhouette of the black tip reef shark to the docile and gentle nature of the nurse shark, the team marveled at the diversity of shark life that called the Red Sea home. For Dr. Sofia Ramirez, the sight of the nurse sharks was a particularly special moment, as she had spent years studying their interactions with the coral reef and the vital role they played in maintaining its health and stability. With each encounter, she carefully documented their behavior and movements, eager to uncover new insights into their fascinating world. For the most part, the sharks seemed unperturbed by the presence of the researchers, going about their business with an air of quiet indifference. But as the team ventured deeper into the reef, they encountered a group of sharks that seemed decidedly less welcoming. Unaccustomed to human presence, these sharks became agitated and territorial, their movements growing increasingly erratic as they circled the researchers with growing hostility. And that's where disaster struck. One of the sharks, driven by a primal urge to protect its territory, lunged at Dr. Sofia Ramirez, 
its razor-sharp teeth glinting in the sunlight as it bore down on her with terrifying speed. With a cry of alarm, Dr. Sofia Ramirez frantically tried to fend off the attacking shark, her hands flailing in a desperate bid for survival. But it was no use. The shark's powerful jaws closed around her arm with bone-crushing force, its teeth sinking deep into her flesh as she screamed in agony. The rest of the team sprang into action, their training kicking in as they fought to rescue their colleague from the jaws of the shark. Emma and another male researcher rushed to Sophia's aid, their hearts pounding with fear as they tried to pry the shark away from her injured arm. With a final desperate effort, one of the male scientists delivered a powerful blow to the shark's gill, stunning it just long enough for the team to pull Dr. Ramirez to safety. But they are still in the water. Emma wasted no time issuing orders to his team to try and distract those sharks so they could get out of the water. Lisa, who was still on the vessel, nodded in agreement as she hurried to retrieve a specialized piece of equipment from the ship's storage locker. Moments later, Dr. Chen returned with a device, unlike anything the rest of the team had ever seen. A remote-controlled underwater drone equipped with a series of bright lights and high-frequency sound emitters designed to disorient and distract sharks. With a flick of a switch, Dr. Chen activated the drone, its lights casting a brilliant glow across the water as it hummed to life. The effect was immediate. The sharks, disoriented by the sudden onslaught of light and sound, hesitated in their pursuit of Dr. Ramirez, giving the team precious seconds to enact their rescue plan. Working together with practiced precision, the team quickly maneuvered Dr. Ramirez toward the safety of the research vessel. Their hearts pounding with fear and adrenaline as they fought to protect their colleague from the relentless predators that lurked just beneath the surface. With the drone providing much needed cover, the team managed to hoist Dr. Ramirez out of the water and onto the deck of the ship, where they quickly began to administer first aid to her injured arm. As they waited anxiously for help to arrive, the team reflected on the dangers of their chosen profession and the importance of respecting the creatures they studied. The encounter with the territorial sharks had been a stark reminder of the risks they faced every time they ventured into the ocean. Still, it had also reaffirmed its commitment to understanding and protecting its delicate ecosystems. Hours later, Dr. Sofia Ramirez was airlifted to a nearby hospital, where she underwent emergency surgery to repair the damage to her arm. Miraculously, she survived the ordeal, though the scars of the encounter would remain with her for the rest of her life.